Good evening, everybody. So I am on the prowl. This is a Tokyo Midnight Snack episode. Uh, this is sort of a series I do after hours when I'm working late and yeah, I'm hungry. This is the Only Japan Go channel. All the videos in this are live streamed. So if the quality does get bad, sometimes we're at the mercy of technology. So I can't control it, but I will keep bringing you the story. Um, so I'm back there. You saw Yoshinoya. That's one of the famous uh, fast food gudon chains here in Japan. But I'm not going to be going there. I'm going to find another place that I'm going to take you to, just around the corner here. Um, this is my neighborhood that I live here in Tokyo, and I've been here for wow, like 13 years living here. And I'm going to be moving soon, which is kind of sad, but you know it's inevitable. Uh, life moves on. So I'm going to be sad to say goodbye to this neighborhood. Yoshinoya was the first restaurant I ate at, that one right there, um, 13 years ago, back in 2005 when I moved here. And uh, I never went in again. I only ate at that Yoshinoya once. Because I think, um, it, it, I, I have a kitchen, so I like to cook, actually. So when I have the chance and I'm eating out, I'll eat at a Yoshinoya out away from my house. I won't eat at the one here. So the one I'm going to be eating at <laughs> is right down there. I think those of you who live in Japan know that yellow sign on the right. And that's where I'm going. Ha <laughs> ha We're not that far away. It is after midnight here. It's um, about 1.30. No, I'm sorry. It's about 12.30. 12.30, 12.40. Uh, in the morning. It's already Monday here in Tokyo and uh, I'm gonna be working pretty late today. I have a video that I want to upload, but the story keeps changing So while I'm, I'm up editing, I have to go in and get a snack. So this is where I'm gonna be going um, Let me let me turn up the light here. I have this really cool light that I use for the live streaming, but this one is called Matsuya Haha some people might know Matsuya. Right. And they have pretty good gyudon. But Matsuya also has other things on the menu. And one of the things that they have is the Butashio Karbidon, which is really good. And you can see here the the Hanjuku Tamago, the half-boiled egg or soft-boiled egg, which is something that I love. And here's the menu. They have a premium gyudon meishi, which is which is just $3.50, 380 yen, which is ridiculously cheap. Um, but I'm gonna go, and, and let me just take a look at the menu really quickly. They also have curry rice, which is pretty good. Um, I really like the curry rice here. If you, you can also get this to go. The reason why I like to eat in at Matsuya is because if you eat here at the restaurant, you get a free miso soup which is really cool. I mean, it's just like the icing on the cake, right? So what I'm gonna go for is this one right here. Do you see this? In English, it says here, it's the premium gyumeshi with uh, spicy sauce and extra green onions, negi, and an egg. I like how they write it in English. It, it doesn't sound as good as the uh, uh, negi tapuri premium, uh, uh, karai negi tamad, Ushi meshi. It's it's pretty, pretty crazy. And and here you can see the sizes. There's nami mori, omori, which is the big one. And then they have a super extra large size. And then a mini. I'm just gonna get the regular tonight because I want to keep it simple. Um, the, oh, this is this is um gyu. This is um. They also have a pork one, don't they? Oh, I always get this one though. I always get the uh, negi tapuri negi, uh, negi. Um, Shio Buta Carbidon. I like this one the best. They always have this on the menu, but right now they have this special gyudon. So that's what we're gonna get, okay? All right. There's like nobody in the restaurant. All right, this is good, good timing. So I, I don't want to take this this gimbal in. So I'm gonna take it take the gimbal off because I don't actually have permission to film. All right, and we're going to do this. We're gonna do this stealth. <laughs> I like stealth. 
I like this I like this chain because if you see here, check it out. It says here that it has no additives, there's no preservatives, and uh, it's 100% all Japanese rice. They don't use anything from um, another country. So they make a statement of it on the front door. Right, so let's go in, okay? English. Dining customers. Premium view mesh. Oh, this is pretty cool. Um, oh, this one. Um, I'm gonna go regular size. This is not good. Right. Hold on a second. All right. They're actually making it right now. So what I'm going to do now is... Here's a restaurant right here. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to turn off this live stream for about two minutes. And then when it comes... I'm gonna show you what it looks like, and then we're gonna have a uh, a really special um, gyudon that has um, chopped onions on top of it, as well as a soft boiled egg. If you saw what it looks like, we're gonna see and compare it to the menu out there to what we have in front of us. The reason why I'm turning it off is because I wanna take a picture too, and I can't take a picture of it and also live stream. So give me a couple of minutes. He's, he's making it right now, and we're gonna be back in a second. And we're back. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Oh, the picture. Hold on a second. So this is the gyudon that I'm talking about. So it looks really good. Um, you can see the negi, which is the green leeks on top of it. And underneath all of that is the beef. And then I have miso soup. This came free. I love matsuya because you always get a free one. And then this one is some spice that we're going to put on top of it. So let's start. I'm gonna put it on top of the gyudon. Alright. Alright. You can mix it like this or put it on top. Let's put it on top. You're supposed to actually mix it, but I'm just gonna put it on top. I don't mind mixing it. It's probably gonna look really good. Oh, yeah. Normally you would mix it, but it just looks, the color of the egg is just so beautiful, isn't it? Oh, hold on, I gotta take a picture of this. Hold on a second. Back. So, 
Oh, look at how soft that egg is. Oh, wow. Some people might be really grossed out by this, but it's just so good. Oh, this is awesome. Check it out. Oh my lord. Here we go. Oh, that, does this not look good or what? And you can see the rice underneath there. And when you put the egg on it, the consistency of the raw egg, and it's a really, really good raw egg. It's a high quality egg. Mixed in with, with the beef that you have here and the vegetables in here. It's a really good, healthy meal. And you have the miso soup here, and a lot of single single people will eat this. Now, Matsuya also gives you this spice, and I like to add a little bit to it. <laughs> All right, let's try this, okay? All right, are you ready? I could eat this all night long. postcard club the only in japan postcard club and if you want to join the postcard club just join patreon i send these out to fans all around the world and uh it's a way for me to connect with uh viewers um through postcards and support the show so i've been doing that and that's one of the things that's been keeping me up now after i finish this gudon i'm going back to um finish uh the next video for the only in japan main channel but until then i'm going to be eating this gudon and I might do another another vending machine run, so let's see. Mmm. So good. under five dollars it's an unbelievable deal this cost 450 yen which is like four dollars and four dollars it's like four dollars raw egg miso soup tea you don't you can't get better than this right next to my house I, everyone who says how how you will lose weight when you come to Japan, everything's healthy. No. You're gonna eat twice as much because it's so good. There's no way around it. Oh man. Every single bite is so good. Customers come in here and they eat really fast and then they get out. Usually they're out in about five minutes. Um, because I'm talking, it's it's a little bit longer. Mm. Mm. 
when you get you don't you scarf it down. You do not eat like eat like a snob. You eat it like a hungry man. You just take it down. You don't try to be a hero. No. What a hero to your stomach is you eat it. <laughs> a lot of people ask me, do you have, uh, is there like a certain way to eat? Hold your chopsticks and eat it. I like to hold the bowl. This here gives you a grip. So if you, if you hold it like this, you can bring it up to your mouth and just pull it in. That's what I do. This is how I get the rest of it out. We're down to the bait, the bottom. Shovel it. You shovel it in. I pull all of it into the corner, like here. I, I, I bring all of the rice, every single rice I'm gonna eat. It's rice now. I bring it all into one corner and then I just shovel it in. Here's what the restaurant looks like. <coughs> um, I like how they give you some condiments for salad. This is spicy pepper. This is dressing for the salads. Um, you have ginger if you want it. Let me get down here. There you go, some ginger. And you have chopsticks. And there's the computer that I ordered it from. And you'll get a ticket. This ticket you keep, this is your receipt. And the other half you give to the manager, who will make it and then bring it to your seat. And he's back there cooking. Because it's the middle of the night, we're the only ones here. And that's a meal. Good to see Oh my, that was the best meal ever. And you know what, there's something about Gudon, it, it's, you can eat it for lunch. Let me put the light in. You can eat it for lunch, but it's just more satisfying when you eat it in the middle of the night. I don't know why. Um, I'm not going to be going to bed, but let's just say that oh, there's the light. That helps at night. Let's just say that I'm, I'm powered up now to uh, work for another few hours. So I'll probably be up until about 4 a.m. This is what I normally do. Um, the reason why I could do, bring these midnight snacks to you because this is my usual... Um, uh, schedule. I will work in the um, middle of night because I don't get distracted. There's nothing to bother me. It's just quiet. My apartment's quiet. The city's quiet. The streets are quiet. Check it out. There's nothing here. There's nothing going on and I can just work uninterrupted. So I get most of my work done between 1 and 4 a.m. And then I go to bed and I wake up at around uh, nine o'clock, so I get about five hours of sleep, but that's probably not the healthiest thing for me. Yeah. Um, you probably need eight hours of sleep, uh, but uh, I, I think I'm, I'm gonna be taking a, a break soon. Ooh. Ooh, <laughs> you don't power. So you, you get powered up. That place is just down the street from my house. It's insane, the, the quality of food that you can get in the middle of the night and it's open 24 hours, it's 100% dangerous. Oh, man, now I'm ready to get back to work. So I'm gonna try to hit a vending machine and get a drink for us and then I'm gonna call it a night. Um, yeah, I like these midnight runs, man. So if, if you do come to Tokyo, and, and thanks for uh, the, I see a lot of comments on my haircut. Yeah, I got, I got, uh, I w I've been going to the same um, barber for the last, yeah, 12 years since I've been living here. I go to the town next door and he cuts my hair. He, I don't have to say anything. I love it. I go in there 
He asks me where I've been filming because he watches the show. I tell him where I've been. He, he's from Hokkaido originally, but he moved here when he was a kid. So I tell him about Hokkaido and I went to Abashiri to film up there. And uh, we have conversations and he tells me, uh, um, gives me advice about life, which I think is pretty cool. We, we only speak in Japanese, he, has, he, he can't speak any English. but uh, And then he, I get the haircut. And every time it's the same. It's like he remembers how he cut the hair. That's what I like about Japan. They're, they're just, um, well, you know what? It's, it's like that around the world. If you go to the same barber over and over again, they're going to get to know your hair. But I, I like the fact that I can go in there and I trust I'm going to get a good haircut. Where I, have, I don't have to say anything to him. What do you want this time? I don't even say it. I sit down, he just cuts it. And it costs 10 bucks. So, I like that. He's an old guy. He's um, in his 60s but <laughs> he runs the shop so I, I like supporting the local businesses um, yeah I'm going actually to the beer vending machine right now I think Omu was was talking about that. Uh, thank you for that by the way he's always uh, leaving a comment I like that I can see a lot of you are leaving yeah channel Omu. yes always leaving a comment and uh, that's uh, gives me some motivation to keep the live streams going all right there's the vending machine I can't see any difference with this light. I have this new light. It's pretty cool. I don't see any difference with this. Peter was right, the street lights are pretty strong. <sighs> the weather's getting warmer, which makes me really happy. I don't need to have a jacket when I go out at night. I'm pretty good with uh, just a light jacket instead of a, the, my down jacket tonight. It is a little spooky. Right, cooking mama's got it right. <laughs> kind of spooky out here. All right. All right, here it is. There's the beer vending. Why am I whispering? All right, what are our choices? All right, Mr. Sphinx Canada is saying beer, and I'm I'm prompt. I'm probably gonna be getting a beer, but l let's look at the other choices. Hot coffee. Ah, uh, Randolph, maybe not. Um, these are all hot. This is corn. Um, I had that last time, though. Big chunks of corn. You know, whispering is just even spookier when I do it like this. Um, I used to drink this one all the time. This one is only available in Tokyo. You won't find it in Osaka. I don't know why, but Max Coffee is, is only in this area. It used to be only in, like, Tochigi, but um, now you can find it all over the place. Oh, look, they have the peach Fanta in a can now. They didn't have that before. What is Koo? Koo is like, um, oh gosh, Koo is, it's just like a really sweet, it's made by Minute Maid, you see? So Americans will know that brand, Minute Maid. But it's, it's, a, it's just like really sweet sugar water that kids love. And this is the uh, red bean paste in a can, which is really good on a hot, on a cold winter night. It keeps you warm, this one. And then we have Bacardi Sweat, the one that everybody talks about. Why they make it, why they call it sweat? It's because you sweat and then you drink it and it replaces the sweat. Don't ask me, I, did, I didn't name it. <laughs> and they have these, these miniature Coke Zeros. Yeah. All right, let's go for a beer because uh, Canada, uh, Mr. Canada Spinks, uh, uh, I think he had it right. That's what I should get here. Which one though? I'm, I'm tempted to go for the big, big Ebis. Um, but Asahi is, is pretty good too. It's a hard one. Anyone have any suggestions? Asahi. Clear Asahi. Oh, firecracker. You got that. Mix is going. Please keep the Midnight Food Series going. Oh, I have no, I have no intention of stopping that. You know, mix. I got no intention of stopping the midnight uh, food series. We're gonna keep this going. This is fun. Um, I, right now, it looks like everyone's saying always Asahi Ebisu. Uh, Edward says Ebis though. Yeah, Asahi Kalpis. Kalpis isn't even a beer. That's stronger in a weird way. Get both. Uh, Colin, I'm just gonna. That's. I can't drink both. I don't want to waste anything. Asahi Clear Sapporo beer. I'm gonna go for the Asahi. 
Oh, who said Red Bull? Antarctica. In Antarctica, I said Red Bull. All right, I'm going for the Asahi. Okay, here I go. So we got an Asahi. Oh, look at the, I got the light. So it, 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 the light is really working well. Awesome. Look at how this Asahi is now flying down the street. Silver bullet. That was kind of cool. Turn the light around. So I'm going to go back to my usual spot. We're going to crack this open and I'm going to do a comp buy for all you. I appreciate all the support. Thanks for the super chats, by the way. Appreciate that. And don't worry, we're going to keep the Midnight Food series running. Um, I, it, it's just a natural thing for me to do. And uh, I, I like, I used to do this by myself, but when I can go live like this, it feels like, you know, we're, we're doing this together and that is so much better <laughs> than doing it alone. <laughs> I was in that restaurant alone. Did you see that? The Gidon restaurant, Matsuya? And it's so much better when you have, when you're with friends and eating. So it kind of, in a weird way, it felt like, you know, I was with, I wasn't alone. And that's, that's sort of a cool thing. Uh, so Deborah, I uh, thought you had to have a special card to buy beer and such. I was just actually, I'm glad that you brought that up, Deborah, because um, the new vending machines require ID. Oh, thank you, Eric. The, the new vending machines require some kind of driver's license. Another reason why I got my driver's license, because you need to have that um, ID to get beer. But that is old school. <clears throat> oh man, I'm still tasting that gudon. It's so good. It tastes even better the second time. <clears throat> um, yeah, you, you know, you, the new ones have ID, just like the tobacco machines, have a TASPO card. And the TASPO card is a ID that you need to have uh, in order to buy tobacco. And you have to get that at a kiosk and fill out an application. And I think it takes a couple of weeks for you to receive it. I think you have to put your picture on it too, on the application. So that the police uh, track you down. Mr. Smokey, you have to uh, show your card. All right. Uh, those are the guys that give me my rental bike. They just finished up for the night. All right, here we go. Asahi. Oh, oh, I almost lost the camera. This is a brand new iPhone too. I can't, I can't lose the iPhone. The light is sort of, I'm gonna use the light as a, That, my friends, is a midnight snack. That's how we do things. That's how we roll in Tokyo. Roll in Tokyo. No, there's no, there's no good way to say it. I was, you know, you try to be cool, and sometimes it doesn't work out that well. Um, let's see, what else is going on while I have, while I have you uh, here? I guess I can talk and take some questions for a couple of minutes. Um, yeah, come by, everybody, come by. Um, uh, this week, I'm just going to be editing and staying home. I, I have a couple of videos for the main channel I want to finish up editing, uh, including the Living living uh, to 100 Years Old uh, episode, which has been really complicated. Um, that's a hard one to edit. But I'm hoping, I was hoping to have it up tonight, but I got to get back to work and keep doing it. Um, I have some other news that I'm going to tell you probably in a couple of weeks. I'm going to hold off on that for a little while. But uh, I, I also want to ask you, what did you think of Peter's live streaming? What do you think of Peter's channel? 
Uh, my friend Peter, who a lot of you know from from uh, this show, he often helps me and, and travels around with me. Um, I, I, we just have so much fun, and I, I love Peter because we can play each other. We know each other so well, and I, there were some comments saying that we're rude or I'm rude or we're rude to one another, it's because we know each other. You get a couple of guys that are out on the town or a couple of guys walking around, we're gonna jazz it, each other up, you know? We're not gonna be super polite to one another and uh, uh, we're, we're cool like that. And, and after the live stream ends, we have a great time. Sometimes we'll go get a beer and relax and he's, he's just a really good friend of mine. So don't, don't take things the wrong way. If we say something that might offend you or you might not feel comfortable with, Guaranteed, please write it in the comments. That's cool. I'll probably get to it and say, look, you know, we're just good friends and that's the way, that's the way we are. We're two expats from America living here in the in Japan. Um, he, we both work with Japanese people all the time. We're so used to this culture here that when we're together, you know, we sort of throw out all of the conventions and the things that you're supposed to do with normal people and we just are friends. And I think it's, um, you know, I was thinking about this too. Um, there's this word called cringe and uh, um, people often say you know they write and just they just write cringe in the comments I'm not bothered by this in fact it took me a while to figure out why they were writing it and it's not a, it's supposed to be, have a bad meaning but I think if you are an authentic person if you're someone who is who is who you are there's you're you're going to sometimes be cringe okay there's no way around it because nobody is perfect. Everybody is is geeky or cheesy or nerdy in their own way and gonna be cringe. And I think if you weren't cringe at some time, I don't even know if I'm using the word right. If you weren't cringe at some time in your life, I don't, oh baby, I, I don't think that you would be an authentic person. I'm just, I'm just saying this honestly, I don't try to, um, yeah, I do. I try to be a little bit special for the camera sometimes, but the more I do this live streaming, the more natural I think it's becoming, and there's no way, there's no way for me to hide who I am when I'm live streaming, and I love this. This is something I didn't have before um, uh, when I was doing the live streaming, when I was doing the main Only in Japan channel. You'd see me as a reporter, and I never really was in front of the camera, and when I'm live streaming, there's no way not to, there's no way not to show your true self. I think live streaming, I think I've done like like a, a thousand hours of live streams. And if you look through the entire work of that, you could probably psychoanalyze me and find out who I am as a person. And uh, yeah, there's moments when I'm probably a jerk or there's moments where I'm cringe or there's moments when I'm an idiot or there's moments when I'm stupid. But that's the, that's the glorious thing about live streaming is that, you know, we're all just people. We're all just people out there just trying to have fun and in the pursuit of happiness and uh, you know drinking a beer makes me a little bit happier in the middle of the night with you so that's why I will not stop doing it no matter how um, cringe I might be from time to time but that's just that's just a human emotion Mr. Sphinx Canada I love the banter between you and Peter thank you that's really cool um, uh, uh, Grigori I hope I'm saying that right. Good Grace says, when are you getting married to Jennifer? All right, you know, my girlfriend does not, I have a girlfriend, okay? And she doesn't, she gets a slightly jealous when everybody comments about um, uh, me marrying Jennifer. I don't mind, and you know what, Jennifer doesn't mind either. But Jennifer and I, honestly, we're just really good friends. Um, and, uh, Everyone's like going, no. <laughs> well, what do you think? I'm, I'm 44 years Well, come on. I'm 44 years old, and I've been living in Japan for 20 years. This is my 20th year. Of course I'm going to have a girlfriend, you know? I mean, really? Um, but, guys, the comments are coming in really fast now. I guess I, I sort of touched a bell or rang a bell. Could you please do a video on gluten-free? Okay. That's something I'll do. Uh, I'm your fan because you are real, bright and funny, and friends do these things. Seven Red Two, I think so too. You know, um, I don't want to hide anything from you. Um, is it a pop? <laughs> no way. Are you kidding me? Franny, Franny Meow Zero Seven Red says it's a bombshell. Are you serious? That shouldn't be a, a big surprise. Um, John and Jennifer ship has officially sunk. 
no, Kale. Ah, look, I don't want to. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to make anybody upset. But I, I've, I've been completely honest with you. When I told you Jennifer and I were just friends, it was it was true. Jennifer and I are just really friends, and um, I love Jennifer. I've, I've known her for ten years. She's like she's like family to me. You, you don't want to mess around with that and, and ruin what you have. Mia is somebody I worked with who I respect. She's a freelancer who. Uh, is a really amazing person, and um, uh, where is she? She was in Okinawa for a while. Um, you know, she has a live. She has a, a um, uh, an Instagram that you should definitely check out. I think though it's private. Private though, maybe. Uh, abandoned ship. <laughs> Come on, guys. It's not that bad. I mean, Jennifer. Jennifer uh, has her private life, and I will never talk about Jennifer's private life. I think if you want to know about her life, you can ask her. Um, same with Peter, although Peter seems to let people in a little bit more, uh, more and more. Um, it, I, I think it's pretty cool that Peter has introduced Joji to you, his son. Joji is, I remember Joji was, was a lot smaller than he was, but he's, he's turned out to be a pretty smart, intelligent kid, and, and uh, yeah, Peter's a pretty good uh, papa, I think. So he's also, a, you know, Peter's my friend, but he's also like a role model, and if I ever become a dad one day, I, I probably something like Peter, hmm most of the time but he's Peter's a really good guy and and, and you know what I can't buy to you guys um, for a lot of you who have been supporting his channel and Jennifer's channel and Kevin's channel and the friends that I introduce you on the show to me that's sort of a big deal because um, I, I, I've said this before I don't do collaborations with other youtubers because that's sort of disingenuous I'm not really um, I, I would do a collaboration with another youtuber because it was good for the channel you know and I, I don't think that that's exactly what I want to do with the Go channel. I want to introduce you to who I am. I want to introduce you to my Japan, um, someone who's been living in Japan for 20 years, something different than everybody else. Let's talk. <laughs> All right. We'll talk more. You know what I'm going to do then? I'm going to turn it around this way. And this is, this is your view. <sighs> Asahi super dry. So, I think that's a good note to end the live stream on. <laughs> I got in trouble. <laughs> There's Linda. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm always going to be honest with you. If you ask me a question I, and I don't want to answer it, I'm just not going to answer it. Um, if you're critical of me, I like it, actually. I'm, I don't take anything, I don't take offense at anything because I've been doing this for a long time. And I'm used to people um, not being nice all the time. That's the way YouTube is. But I think there's always sometimes a grain of honesty in trolls. There's always something that you should think about and not see yourself in the, to see yourself in a bad light. Not too much, but sometimes it can make you a better person. <clears throat> sometimes. Drink the acai. I, why, did, why did I get the big one? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I can't. Oh man. Oh. When you're at a party, there's usually loud music, lots of people around. I mean, you can hear everything, can't you? All right, I'm going to go home now, but I want to say thank you to everybody. Before I leave, I want to say thank you to everybody uh, joining me on this midnight snack. It's been a lot of fun. I'm actually once again in front of the Matsuya where we had the gyudon. Um, Samuel asks, is it illegal to drink on the streets? Um, down, boy. No, it's not. They have a vending machine with beer in it. Of course it's not illegal. However, there is one caveat, yeah? When you drink publicly in Japan, um, the reason why Japan has it... Oh, thank you, Mr. Spinks. Um, I watched a lot of YouTube channels by far. You're my favorite. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, but uh, um, one of the reasons that we are allowed to drink outside is because, for the most part, Japan is not a violent... My, Japan is not a violent country. People are not violent or um, get into fights. People are very um, subdued. And when they get drunk, most people, like 99% per percent of the people... 99.9% .9 become even more docile, become more like softer.
And it's a right that we have. We can drink out on the streets. We can drink in a train. We can drink walking around. And we, we have this, is be, it's because people in Japan are very responsible for the most part. They might drink too much and you might see somebody yakking, yakking out there on the side of a tree. That happens, it's nature. But it, in general, um, we don't have fights. I've never been in a fight in Japan. I've never had anybody who is confrontational or aggressive to me um, in 20 years of living here as a result of alcohol. And these are really good things living here. Uh, James writes, longtime watcher, first time super chatter. Thank you, James, from Canada. Um, another, ca wow, I, you know what? We have so many amazing people from Canada. Greetings from a Toronto Patreoner. Hold on a second, beer. <clears throat> oh, maybe. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Oh, Brian, yeah. Thank you. I know the Patreon is because I've been going through the list of people on Patreon because I've been doing the, the postcards for the postcards clubs tonight. Uh, this one is coming out to everybody who's in the postcard club. I'm taking it to the post office tomorrow. Um, I get the stamp, the airmail stamp. They let me uh, commandeer the airmail stamp and then I, I give it to the ladies and they, put, they uh, uh, put the stamps on by hand and then send it off to everybody, which is pretty cool. Um, I still do everything myself. There was somebody who, who asked me if I had an assistant and I don't, not yet. I'd like to. I, I'm having trouble. Sometimes I'm underwater with work. I'm still in trouble because I can't get everything done that I want to do. Um, but these live streams are a way for me to take a break and just hang out with you guys for a little bit. And uh, that's what I do. Uh, John is 44 now. Yeah, John is 44. Vegas, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> oh man, I have a need. And what is the next Karate Kid movie? Um, actually, it's called Cobra Kai, and um, I'm actually a big fan of Ralph Macchio because we sort of have a similar look. And uh, Cobra Kai is a, a YouTube original series, which is on YouTube Red, and I think that's debuting this year. So you might want to check it out. Uh, and Ralph Ralph Macchio is back, and I think for the most part. Um, I might be aging better than Ralph. I got some gray, you know, but I might be aging a little bit better than Ralph. Although Ralph is, he's aging pretty good too. He still looks pretty young. I'm, I'm maybe just a slight, slightly ahead of Ralph. I, I hope he just come to Japan. He came here for, for, no, you know what, that's that's not true. They did it, I think they did a couple of scenes in Karate Kid 3 in Okinawa, but most of that was, was the set was in Hawaii. And uh, they kind of cheated. Karate Kid um, 3 was not filmed in Okinawa. It was filmed mostly in Hawaii. And it was a set made to look like Okinawa. Crazy, right? Crazy. All right, everybody. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to turn it around and take a look at Matsuya. And then i got to end this live stream. Because nature's calling. Big time. That's another reason why I'm talking really fast. Because nature's calling. All right, everybody, thanks again for the super chats, and, and I really, I have fun. Um, nice to hang out with you on this break. But there you go, there's Matsuya on the other side, where we had a gyudon at midnight together. All right. See you guys, I'll probably be back on in a, in a day or two, so see you until then. Thanks, everybody. out here.